you can see the screen yes sir okay okay so um, in the last class we started looking at uh, what is known as circularly symmetric complex gaussian random variable right so this is what we looked at so what is the definition so generally uh, if you take two random variables which are gaussians and you combine them in this way x plus i y you we say that z is complex gaussian um, random variable um, with certain mean and variance let's say mean and some variance if it essentially means that you take each x and y gaussian with for example uh, mean uh, whatever the real component of mu and uh, y the mean of y being the imaginary component of y mu and the variance being sigma squared by 2 okay so why is it called circularly symmetric for example the distribution of z is same as for example e power i theta times z for every theta in 0 to the power so that's why it's called circularly uh, symmetric and um, similarly what we can do is we can stack this and uh, look at what is known as circular complex gaussian random vector right complex gaussian random vector so what is a complex gaussian random vector so again uh, you have let's say x which is in cn um this is n dimensional uh, it's in cn uh, we say that this is complex gaussian if i can write this as some x dash plus i times y dash right where x and y are Uh, gaussian vectors so the notation that i'm going to use is something like this the mean vector mu and the covariance being sigma so you should be careful when you define the covariance of this for example if you take a random variable complex gaussian random variable uh, if you look at the variance right that's what we saw in the last class the variance turned out to be uh, if you just take expected value of z squared right that turned out to be zero right for example z squared is zero whereas if you look at expected value of z z star which is expected value of mod z square that turned out to be 2 sigma square right so when you define covariance for a n dimensional uh, gaussian random vector uh, you should care you should be very careful so this is defined as expected value of x minus mu um if i assume that this is a column vector so i'll keep this as it is x minus mu hermitian okay uh, i am assuming that everyone knows what her hermitian is right it's transpose conjugate so this is how you define uh, the uh, the covariance in fact if you look at expected value of for example uh, x x minus mu times x minus mu hermitian this will uh, sorry not hermitian transpose what do you think is the answer instead of hermitian if i take uh, transpose hmm? maybe zero yes right so it might be uh, zero right okay so um, um you should be careful when you define the covariance of this is this fine hmm? um so if you are looking at for example um, where is this used uh, so in communication systems um, if you you have the i component so basically you have your received signal you multiply it by of course you pass it through the filter and all that after that you multiply it by cos and sin right do you agree and then yes. you do a filtering and uh, then you do sample right this is what we have right this is uh, the i and q component right so this is what we have now the noise here w of t is a complex uh, noise it's it's a um, gaussian process so what you are trying to do here is you are multiplying by w of t and then passing it through a low pass filter and sample the resulting sample corresponding to this <laughs> excuse me corresponding to this uh, cos component and uh, let's say this is uh, um let me call this is w1n and this is w2n 
so w1 n and w2 n turns out to be gaussian and they are independent of each other because i multiplied by cos and sin okay so that is something that you can show right for example if you take a process y of t you multiply by sin well i think uh, you, if you are doing match filtering you will do integral right so if you for example if i multiply it by cos okay omega ct you take omega of t o w of t and multiply by sin omega ct integrate from 0 to t right this is a number do you agree these two are numbers do you agree yes sir uh, <coughs> sir here wt is a process right yes it's a process it's a gaussian process when you multiply by cos omega c t and integrate over from 0 to t t is the period of omega c okay meaning uh, omega c is 2 pi fc so fc i can write it as 1 by t okay and omega c as 2 pi fc so do you agree that this integral the first integral is a number the second integral is a number right do you agree hmm? yes yes sir ah so now uh, what can you say about uh, these two if i assume um, let's say a uh, gaussian process hmm? i can also for example uh, if i can let let me write it like this okay xn okay uh, i'll uh, yeah so xn uh, times some basis right so let me write this basis as uh, Uh, something like this v n of t and uh, yeah so this will be your w of sir? yes now uh, sir uh, like say in the integration uh, the integrand w t uh, into cos omega c t dt sir here w t is a process but while we are integrating we are uh, mm -hmm. assuming that w t is some function of t like we are expressing it in some function of t otherwise we cannot integrate right correct correct so this is like x n times v n of t that will be your w of ah uh, uh, okay ah okay. uh, yeah, yeah yeah right the other one will be w of t times sin omega so the, again it's a linear combination of some basis right so now one can uh, see for example if this xns or for example iid uh, you know gaussian with zero mean and variance sigma squared for example then when you look at these two right so what will happen assuming that you can interchange the integral and summation so this will be phi n of t cos omega ct dt and the other one will be summation over all n xn integral pn of t sin omega ct dt right so we'll have these two do you agree so now this corresponds to for example the x real and this corresponds to x imaginary so i can compactly write this as x which is x real plus i times x imaginary okay so the entire noise uh, maybe i'll write it as wr okay and wi so this whole thing will be wr plus wi so the noise i can write it as wr plus wi so this is a convenience right for mathematical convenience we can write it like this so this corresponds to circularly sorry this corresponds to a gaussian noise right complex gaussian noise is this clear where you get this complex gaussian noise hmm is this clear so like wr and wi should be jointly gaussian uh, huh? i mean uh, uh, to be a complex gaussian noise this wr yeah, and wi so, okay now uh, that's a good question so do you think this is uh, so what is it that we are doing so wr is can you tell me whether wr is gaussian or not so it should be because integration is a linear process so all right so basically this integral will give you a number right so it's basically linear combination of xn right this is another linear combination of xn so wr and wi are gaussians right first of all now i can write for example wr as some alpha n xn okay wi is beta n xn now if you take linear combination of wr and wi again it's gaussian because it's linear combination of xn right 
what is linear combination of uh, let's say alpha beta okay gamma right so gamma nu 1 wr plus nu 2 wi is basically summation over all nu 1 alpha n plus nu 2 beta n w1 right this, this will i can call it as alpha n dash so it's linear combination of sorry uh, xn it's linear combination of xns xns are independent gaussians right so this is again gaussian is this clear they are jointly gaussian therefore is this fine rishab uh yes sir yes sir is it okay yes yes Hello, sir yes sir we can write uh, gaussian process as sum of xn phi n of t right Yes, uh, everything. Of course, there is so, a technical condition which we mentioned, which I mentioned in one of the classes. Your n goes uh, from zero to infinity, right, sir? Huh? N goes from zero to infinity. Well, in fact, it goes from minus infinity to infinity. But if you are uh, restricting yourself to um, some finite, for example, uh, uh, if you are multiplying it with the uh, yes, in general, it is from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So can we say noise is infinite dimensional? Uh, yes, but what happens is if you uh, the, that's the issue, right? That we said well, uh, whenever we write this, we assume that um, we are only looking at a finite uh, band, right? Okay. If you look at infinite band, there are infinitely many frequency component. If you assume that each one has some finite um, zero non-zero variance, then the sum squared need not be finite right that is the condition that we need in order for the gaussian process to exist so for technicality reasons we just assume that this is a finite uh, frequency band okay so minus b to b that's what we will do right for example if you look at communication system somewhere here there is a filter right here there is a filter maybe from minus b to b that means i'm going to pass um so uh, the, the noise will also get filtered do you agree so that's why we will only look at this hmm? is this okay but of course in general it can be infinite uh, frequency so it can be the bandwidth can be infinity for noise but the variances when you look at uh, suppose if you were to write x of t or the noise w of t as linear combination of vns then you should appropriately choose so the, the variances cannot be constant like the sigma squared okay what will happen if it is constant the variance of this itself will be huge right i mean uh, it can be huge unless this vns are orthonormal right so we need this uh, summation phi n square t uh, to be finite right that is something that we need hmm? okay so um, i think let's not get confused so the essential idea is you are looking at um, noise passed through some frequency band and i am going to multiply it by some function and integrating it right uh, by cos and sin so you have two components one is wr and the other one is wi so both are jointly gaussian right so i'll compactly write it as wr plus iwi which is complex gaussian right so now if wr and wi are independent right then you can clearly see that so if i say w is wr plus i times wi and wr wi are independent of each other then clearly w is circularly symmetric complex gaussian random variable is this fine is this okay or not hmm uh, sir uh, sir uh, how hmm. did i uh, i mean how did we tell from independence they are circularly symmetric okay so let's look at that so for example when do you say that w e power i theta and w both have the same distribution when do you say that Hmm? when do you say that under what condition this will be true to make the joint pdf 
uh, should be uh, the joint right CD. so you have to write the uh, the pdf of w okay so that's what we will do hmm? so i'll write the uh, pdf of uh, this complex gaussian and then we will uh, move on okay so let me just give me a minute So uh, let me write it for n-dimensional vector, and then we will uh, see the special case. Okay. So what is a um, n-dimensional vector? Um, uh, so so let's assume that z is uh, okay. So uh, one second, let me just think. W is circularly symmetric complex. Then this two are will have the same distribution. That's when. Uh, Okay, so let's try this. Let me just try uh, from first principle. So what is W? So I'll write this as maybe I'll just use uh, Z and Z. Okay, Z as X plus I Y. Okay, so X plus I Y cos theta plus I sine theta. Okay, so what is it that we will get? X cos theta minus uh, Y sine theta. That's one term plus i into y cos theta plus x sine theta. Right? This is what we have. Now, uh, what is sir? Here, have we assumed anything uh, before, like x and y are independent or something like that before? Yeah. So basically, the idea is you have to show that. Uh, this with the same requires x and y to be independent. Okay. Well, the question is, does it require independence, right? Whether you need x and y to be independent for this to be true, right? The other way to look at this is, uh, see, uh, let me use some geometry. So R. Uh, sir, sorry for interrupting. Uh, yes. sir, I'm just having one doubt, sir. Here we are dealing with random variables, right? Uh, right uh, up until now, like x, yes, y. Yes. We are, yes. we are so, very, not vectors or something like. Not not vectors. Yeah. Uh, so okay. I just briefly touched upon vectors somewhere in before, but uh, these are all random variables. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. So okay. this is some angle. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, this is theta. Okay. Now if I multiply by e power i theta, what will happen? Or uh, theta dash or something. I don't know. Um, okay, let me call this as theta dash. Um, so if you multiply by e power i theta, right? What will happen? It will ro get rotated, right? So that means the radius r that nothing happens to that. The only the angle will get shifted, right? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Huh. Now suppose intuitively. If the angle, right? So angle of the original, right? So what is the angle? The angle would be sorry about that. Tan inverse of y by x, right? If this is independent of the distribution of r, what is r? Square root of x square plus y square, right? If they are not dependent on each other, well, although it looks like you know you have y by x and x square plus y square, then uh, or let me look at it this way. So we should ask what is the distribution of this theta dash, right? If this theta dash distribution turned out to be uniform, for example, okay, uniform between 0 to 2 pi, then multiplying by theta uh, or rotate, so uh, adding an angle theta to a uniform distribution between 0 to 2 pi will not, so modulo 0 to 2 pi will not change the uh, distribution. Do you agree? Hmm? Okay, let me put it this way. Okay, so this is aside. I should have planned for uh, this particular thing. Uh, so um, suppose let's say uh, u is uniform between zero to one. Okay, I will create another random variable. Let's say z, which is some number a plus u. So what can you say about the distribution of z? Can somebody tell me? So distribution of u 
the density f u of u u is between 0 to 1 right 1 okay is this fine now if i add a constant this is a known constant okay what will happen to z hmm? its mean gets shifted huh. what happens to the distribution hmm? so distribution remains same i think variance uh, doesn't shift happen. right shifts right do you agree ah uh, yeah right this will be a and this will be a plus 1 and this will be 1 right this will be your fz of z right do you agree okay now suppose you have theta which is uniform 0 to 2 pi okay now i'll get theta dash which is theta plus some constant let's say um, small theta okay so what happens to the distribution of this it gets shifted by theta right to be theta this will be theta plus 2 pi and this height will be 1 by 2 pi this will be theta dash of x do you agree hmm? now i construct another let's say psi which is theta dash modulo 2 pi so what will happen uh, suppose theta is pi by 2 right uh, theta plus 2 pi will be pi by 2 plus pi right so now what will happen if i do modulo basically i am doing wrapping uh, wrapping of the angle right if it is 361 degree i'll uh, wrap it to 1 degree so if i do that what will be the distribution of psi uh, same as theta same as theta right so in other words this will have the same distribution as theta which is uniform 0 to 2 pi do you agree okay now uh, circular symmetry comes from the fact that this angle so let me re rewrite this so you take let's say z which is x plus i y and the r the radius or the uh, amplitude or the magnitude of this will be square root of x square plus y square and the angle theta will be tan inverse of y by x supposing this is uniform between 2 0 to 2 pi okay and r has some distribution let's not worry about that if this is the case if i multiply z by e power r time uh, e power some i some angle in other words i'm going to take z and rotate it by some fixed angle what will happen to the resulting uh, angle of the resulting random variable so let's look at z e power i psi okay or i'll use something else uh, psi phi okay so phi is a fixed angle so what will happen to the angle of this if theta that is the angle of z is uniform the angle of this will also be uniform right do you agree intuitively i'm not proving anything here Yes, sir. Do you agree? Uh, so all that I'm doing is uh, I'm sampling uniform angle and then just giving a small kick, constant kick, right? So it still remains uniform. Do you agree with this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now um, you need to somehow see what will be the joint distribution of these two. Okay. So um, how do you find the joint distribution of uh, R and theta? See, you have x and y, and you have mapped it to r and theta, so it's under certain transformation. So you should see what will happen to the corresponding uh, distributions, right? Joint distribution. It turns out um, I'll probably uh, have one lecture on on this. What happens? Uh, did did I talk about the transformation? No, the Jacobian and all that. No, sir. No. I think I did, right? No? I think no, sir. Let's ask for that. Okay, so then I'll do this. So, so if you look at this, okay, 
theta of r comma theta it will turn out that this will be uniform uh, 1 by 2 pi the angle f theta of okay uh, i'll write it like this this will be some f theta of some angle theta times fr of r okay so f theta of theta will be uh, it's 1 by 2 pi for theta belonging to 0 to 2 pi okay what will be fr of r can somebody give me tell me what this is can you find this out at least how do you find this hmm how do you find this okay so the method is this right so you have to do first the cdf right so probability of this r less than or equal to some r what is this this is same as probability of r squared less than or equal to r squared this is same as probability of x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to r squared so what do you do after this this is Hello, sir. yes will it come out to be real a distribution um can you tell me whether uh, this is real a or okay uh, root of uh, x squared plus y ha huh. so uh, it will turn out to be real a but uh, what will be the distribution of uh, r squared hmm? okay that's what we are trying here right so what do you do after this given y equal to y and you multiply by fy of y and integrate with respect to this y can take any value right so now given y what will happen to this this will be y square hmm. now how do you find this this is easy right so x and y are independent so this is nothing but probability of x square less than or equal to r square minus y square so how do you write uh, this so if x is between r square r square x square is less than or equal to r square minus y square i know what the distribution of x is uh, i can compute this what is this some variance right so i have to evaluate this integral so that will result in what is known as rayleigh distribution so do you remember what is rayleigh f r of r will be what um, do anyone remember what is the rayleigh uh, di distribution of this hmm yes what is the distribution of this rayleigh okay can you tell me what is r squared that i think it is e power minus r right maybe i i might have missed some constants here so the r squared will be one second so two times so r expected value of r squared is two times sigma squared that's the mean so the mean would be two times uh two sigma squared r so this will be two sigma squared okay so this will be your density of your r squared so what will be the density of r maybe from this you can find what the density of r is take that as a homework so in general i want to teach uh, this maybe i'll do that uh, once i finish the marco okay so okay, if you uh, have yes so the independence uh, i mean helped in writing this uh, step mm -hmm. right which one uh, x and y are independent uh, because we ah. first correct so essentially i conditioned on no this is like uh, total probability law right no uh, no sir no sir i mean uh, from that step to next step like uh, this condition becomes a uh, probability of just x yeah x and y are independent so i can uncondition it right probability uh, of a given b is probability of a when a and b are independent events so these two are independent events right one is related to x and the other one is related to y so both the events are independent mm -hmm. okay okay so um, um you you have to do some you have to work work out so basically find what this is oh, there's some issue with the so oh. ha so the, you have to work this the remaining steps to find out what is the distribution of r right 
now um, now because theta turns out to be uniform right and r and theta are independent rotation will not change affect the angle uh, will not affect the radius of or the magnitude the only thing that it does is rotation right so it will change the distribution of looks like it will change the distribution of theta but theta is uniform so shifting with modulo 2 pi will not change anything so it will also remain uniform okay that's why it results in a circularly symmetric complex gaussian random vector is this okay so just one question so this mm. rotation like theta uh, mm. can it uh, i mean can it have other distributions like it's just rotation uh. um meaning so you are saying uh, if i have uh, a different kind of distribution for theta uh, you yeah, can yeah, have but it won't result in a complex gaussian uh, so right. in maybe in that case it uh, the distribution of theta may interfere with the distribution of r so r exactly. can change not just that right so if it is not uniform a small shift can change the whole distribution of the angle even modulo 2 pi right for example my angle distribution is uh, uniform between 0 to pi or 0 to pi by pi by 2 for example and uh, 0 otherwise if I shift it by pi by 2, what happens? It will be pi by 2 to pi uniform, 0 otherwise. If you do modulo 2 pi, it will again remain the same, pi, pi, pi 2 or pi by 2 to pi uniform. But that is not same as 0 to pi by 2 uniform, right? That means you can only observe angle between pi by 2 and pi in the new rotated thing. Whereas in the other thing, we will not uh, observe uh, uniform between pi to pi by 2 to pi. Is that clear? Mm, yes, sir. right. So that's why we need uh, uh, independence of uh, the two. Otherwise, that's not true. Okay. Still, it's complex Gaussian, but it's not circularly symmetric. Is that fine? Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. So, yeah. So I don't want to go into the details of this. So one more result that I will state, and then maybe I'll move on to uh, Marco. I want to start that. So suppose Z is let's say complex Gaussian zero mean and the covariance Z. Okay, so what is this covariance? It's expected value of Z, Z Hermitian. Okay, not the transpose, transpose will be zero. Okay, now, um, and this is non-singular. Okay, that means it's invertible. Then in this case, the density exists or the PDF exists and I can write the PDF as follows. This is one by pi power n determinant of kz okay exponential of minus z hermitian well, z hermitian kz inverse z okay so this is what you get fine is that fine Is this okay? Uh, understood or? Hmm? Oh, yes, sir. Hmm? Is that fine? So, um, so this is for vector, uh, vectors. It's, it's a vector, yes. It's a vector. That's why you have covariance, right? So maybe oh, yeah, I can yeah. read this as complex and dimensional. Okay. So that's why, see, uh, the other thing is it's a, uh, this Z belongs to C and not RN, okay? Not the usual PDF, it's the PDF over uh, a complex plane. And this is what it is. Okay. Uh, so that means uh, the vector, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. n dimensional vector, and each component is something of the form of uh, A plus IB. Uh, correct. 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 Okay. So, for example, this could be like uh, Z11 plus I, I don't know, real plus I times Z11 uh, one cor imaginary Z12 real plus i times z12 imaginary and so on and you take the hermitian of that right so this is hermitian that means you take the transpose and conjugate you'll have minus instead of plus okay is that fine okay sir yeah see uh, one difference is uh, you don't have by for example 2 sigma squared or 2 right by 2 which is the case in your uh, uh, regular real 
uh, random vector case so you don't have to because of the complexity the, the two gets uh, eliminated but anyway so um, i think i will not go beyond this uh, as far as circularly symmetric complex gaussian is concerned okay there is one more small thing that i want to discuss so um, if you have a vector z right what do you mean uh, what do you mean by rotation of this vector z z is a vector okay so this is complex vector what do you mean by rotation can somebody tell me uh, if it's a random uh, it's a complex random variable then rotation means multiplying by e power i theta so what do you mean by rotation in uh, n dimensional space hmm? yes can somebody tell me what do you mean by rotation matrix yeah what kind of a matrix invertible invertible okay so can you say more about that hmm? Hmm. what can you say about this in one dimension so you have x and y right you rotate what do you get what is it that you got got this right where is it ha huh. you got this and this x cos theta minus y sin theta x sin theta plus that thing right this is x cos theta minus minus y sin theta comma y cos theta plus x sin theta right do you agree so now how do i write this in vector vector form i take xy and i have to multiply it by some matrix right what is that matrix the first one if i look at this i have multiplied by cos theta right here and then it will be minus sin theta okay and here you'll have sin theta cos theta do you agree so this will give me x cos theta minus y sin theta y cos theta plus x sin theta so what kind so essentially multiplication at least in two dimension turns out to be uh, sorry rotation in two dimension turns out to be a multiplication by a matrix so what kind of a matrix is this can somebody tell me Hmm. I take this matrix. I take the transpose of this matrix. What is the transpose? Cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta. Right. What do I get? This is cos square theta plus sine square theta one. Cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta zero. Sine theta cos theta minus cos theta sine theta zero cos theta sine theta sine square theta plus cos square theta is one. So identity, right? It doesn't matter even even if you take it to the other side, it will be the same. And it's symmetric, right? So this matrix, if I call U, U is U uh, U U transpose is same as U transpose U, which is identity. It's not really symmetric, uh, but uh, uh, it is. What is what are these kind of matrices called? Orthogonal. Uh, can you? I mean, orthogonal is for vectors, right? Unitary from. Unitary. Ah, unitary, right? Okay. Now, in n-dimensional also, if you have Z and you multiply by unitary matrix, the distribution will be same as if it is circularly symmetric, will be same as Z. If Z is circularly symmetric gaussian right do you agree okay why uh, again it goes back to this transformation so if you have z um, well you can look at this maybe from this itself so what happens if i multiply it by uh, uh, some unitary that's what you need to see right if you multiply by unitary so it's again jointly gaussian that means i have to look at both uh, uh, so if z is let's say circularly symmetric zero mean and some covariance z right what will be u z again definitely it's complex gaussian what will be the mean it's zero vector because expected value of u z is u times expected value of z expected value of z is zero so now what is this this is expected value of u hamitian z hamitian z u hamitian right do you agree or rather the other way right so 
if you pre multiply it be uh, z hermitian u hermitian u z right u hermitian u is identity so i get z hermitian z so i get kz right so the distribution does not change uh, even if you multiply pre multiplied by u that means if you rotate it it does not change the distribution okay so these so are this called circularly symmetric complex gaussian vectors hmm? so this yes. is rotation in n dimension right uh -huh. it's rotation in n dimension cn you take uh -huh. a complex vector in n dimension rotate it by some angle described by the unitary matrix the resulting random vector has the same distribution as that of unrotated z Okay. So, like, uh, first we started from e to the power i, i iota theta multiplied. That that was like a correct. random variable, and then we correct. comes come to vector. Correct. Now. Correct. Correct. So we took a random variable, complex Gaussian random variable. We rotated it. We intuitively saw under what condition the distribution doesn't change, right? Uh, then we called those random variables as circularly symmetric complex Gaussian, and similarly we extend that uh, extended that to n dimension, right? Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Hmm? Any questions? What about others? Ayush. Yes, sir. Is it okay, or you have any questions? Fine. No, no problems. Okay. So I think for you, I had taught a little bit about transformations. So how do you? Uh, find the distribution of a transformed random variable in the undergrad course. Uh, maybe think along those directions and try to prove whatever. Uh, try to see that the joint distribution of R and theta is the product. Okay, uh, but I'll I'll do that because that's kind of important. Uh, when you compute things, you should know that. Okay, uh, Praveen. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, Jayant. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you okay? I mean, you have any questions? No, no. Sir. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, I think instead of starting Markov chains, maybe I'll uh, um, I'll probably start from uh, not probably I'll start from next uh, next class. So, uh, another uh, thing that I had left out was this, right? So, it's about um, sorry, it's about law of large numbers. Okay. So some intuition about law of large numbers, geometric intuition. Numbers. What is it saying, right? Um, suppose I take uh, n random variables, right? We have n. Assume that n is sufficiently large, maybe 10 lakh. Okay. I've taken 10 lakh random variables, i i d. Okay, with certain distribution. So assume, uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's also assume zero mean. What is this saying? One over n summation x i goes to zero. Of course, almost surely in probability as well. Right? Is this fine? Is this okay, everyone? Clear? Praveen? Yes, sir. Uh, Ayush? Yes, sir. Jayant? Jayant? Sir. Okay. So now uh, I can do a little uh, uh, different. So suppose I assume that expected value of xi squared is 1. That means the variance is also 1. Okay. Now, instead of x1 through xn, I'll take x1 squared through xn squared. So what is this saying? This goes to one. Do you agree? Is this clear? This is again law of large numbers, almost surely as well as in probability. Okay. So let's try to understand what this essentially means. What can you say about this guy? What is this? Hmm? What is summation x i squared? Positive. That is okay, but I'll okay. Let me give you a hint also. I'll look at this whole thing. R square. Same. I'll take this as vector x. I can do that. 
where the components are chosen in independent fashion iid fashion with zero mean and unit variance now what is what is summation xi squared dot product is itself ha huh, so that is length squared right so this says length of x nth squared by n goes to 1 with probability 1 right so what does that mean probability that okay so now let's look at uh, um law of large numbers okay so weak law of, uh, sorry uh, in probability convergence so this says 1 over n i equal to 1 to n x i squared minus 1 greater than epsilon Is zero. So instead of that, I'll take less than or equal to epsilon equal to one for all epsilon greater than zero. Okay. So now let's choose some epsilon. Okay. So I'll choose epsilon to be ten uh, power minus ten five. Uh, okay. Is this small enough compared to one ten power minus five? Is really really small, right? Yes. Is that okay? Or maybe I'll uh, I can take it even smaller. Okay. Uh, much much more smaller okay so let's not worry about this let's choose this later so now limit goes to 1 right but that means i can choose n large enough for which this probability is close to 1 right for example um probability of uh, i'll just multiply by n on both sides okay so or i'll write it as it is summation i equal to 1 to n x i squared Minus one, less than or equal to epsilon, is let's say point uh, nine 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 nine. Okay, I can do that. This can happen when n is let's say very large. Okay, so I don't know some ten power pi or something. Is this okay? Fine, right? Okay. okay. i can just do some small modification right so i can multiply by n on both sides fine hmm? is this okay okay sir okay this is what i get okay so what is this saying this is saying okay let me write some geometry think of n dimension okay you have a vector which is some so i'll take x which is x1 through xn n is large so i'll take this vector i look at the length length is close to so this is essentially saying length of x is close to n with high probability this is what is saying right that means if you sample or if you run the experiment will have something like this right so around that right so i'll just use a small ball around that so this is the kind of ball sir yes is it length square or length length square both both yeah no if length square is small length is also small right you agree okay see length squared is close to ah oh, you are right good it's root n okay length is close to root n it's not length squared is close to n therefore length is close to root n okay so this is of the order of root n right and this is very small okay so that means what it's saying is if you sample all the points will lie in this small shell okay nothing lies inside once in a while you will get point inside once in a while you get point outside but if you suppose you sample it uh, so what do you mean by sampling a point here each point is x1 x2 etc and so that means you have taking you are sampling n numbers according to iid zero mean unit variance and that will give you a point here that is like one one run right one one time sampling of a random vector so if i sample it again i get another point another point another point if i do that let's say billion times 
a few times maybe a thousand or less you will find points inside and a few points outside but most of the times it will be in this spherical shell this happens only when n is very large okay only when n is large okay of course i can tune my epsilon also i can make epsilon really really small hmm? is this fine is this fine understood or at least got some idea so that means it it lies on some surface spherical small spherical shell all the points will be inside that and nothing outside nothing inside inside this shell is this fine so if you have any questions please ask the shell tell me sir can you uh, tell me a bit about the sampling procedure uh, so how do you <coughs> excuse me how do you sample a point well, what do you mean by sampling a point here i have to get x1 through xn what do you mean by sampling x1 through xn that means i have to uh, uh, have to x1 is generated according to some distribution x2 is generated mm -hmm. according to same distribution but they are independent across iid right so uh, think of it as gaussian x1 is gaussian x2 is gaussian and so on so you have to generate n gaussian random variables to get a to get one random <coughs> excuse me one random vector okay mm, yes sir <clears throat> okay so if you repeat that multiple times right each time you are sampling a random vector if you do that multiple times let's say a billion times <clears throat> maybe a thousand times or less you will find points inside this i mean somewhere in the shallow region here or outside but otherwise most of the points will be inside right mm, is that okay. okay that's why it's called con sometimes people call it as concentration of measure so all the probabilities are concentrated around this spherical shell and it turns out it's uniform also those are i mean you have to do some more math so it will be uniform on the shell okay mm, okay is that okay yeah um, it'll be almost uniform on the shell uh, and <coughs> excuse me <coughs> uh, uniform on the shell with high probability so this is what uh, shannon made use of uh, when he proved his coding theorem okay so essentially he said uh, i'll consider points only in the spherical shell nothing outside nothing inside right okay so even if a noise gets added up uh, gaussian iid the noise will also be sphere around this right like this if i take another point here leo sphere around if i ensure that this these spheres are not overlapping i can exactly decode so now the question is how many spheres i can put around this spherical shell so that will give me the number of points i can have that will translate to log of snr right so the yeah okay it's a neat nice uh, uh, nice proof Hmm? So it is. Uh, I mean, it is. Uh, this is stronger than uh, uh, law of large number, or uh... no, no, no. It's an implication of large law of large numbers, right? I stated law of large numbers, and then I said, look, this is what uh, law of large numbers imply. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Any other questions? Uh -huh. in law of large numbers uh, the result were, uh, for sample mean and uh, sample average uh, for that and so for uh, from that we jump to length of uh, see this is length squared right right so this result is saying length squared is close to n so length is close to root n that's what i'm saying of course i have done some hand waving in between but i think uh, just to understand this is okay do you agree with this ha uh, yes sir yes right okay mm, okay Any questions regarding this so uh, uh, this is quite useful in many cases so you can when n is large especially let's say you are looking at very high dimensional data when n is large these kind of things will kick in so all the points will be on the sphere nothing outside nothing inside okay and the sphere is n dimensional sphere no i mean spherical shell not uh, finite dimensional so not three third three or two dimensional space okay 
<coughs> sorry any any questions <coughs> any questions uh, pravin pravin no oh, sir no ayush no sir okay um jayant no sir rishab no no sir no sir okay so we will put up the next homework uh, soon okay um maybe uh, tomorrow day after we'll put that up uh, one week's time so just uh, solve the problems and get back to me okay so submit hmm? so we need to have uh, our next uh, 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 test so one second i'll just uh, can we have it on uh, 17th is that okay hmm 17th is that fine hello oh, tuesday sir yes tuesday same same way as i did in the last uh, last time so you'll have 24 hours um you can collaborate <clears throat> to see lessons hmm? uh, poison and gaussian yes so i think uh, one second yeah so last time we had the previous one right so now we'll have poison and all those things hmm? poison and also gaussian process hmm? i'll include that as well gaussian process till uh, okay so let me till uh, just before conditional pdfs for gaussian random vectors okay i won't go beyond that hmm? just before uh, it's page 120 hmm? till page 120 in the book <clears throat> so pause on included the entire chapter gaussian random vectors till page 120 okay yeah. is that fine savan can you drop in an email Uh, in piazza just drop in so that uh, everybody knows yes jayant yes can can it be on wednesday sir uh, why means next wednesday uh, why? because why? we have only one, one class in on that day one class mini i didn't understand so in tuesday we have two classes sir tuesday you have two classes sir uh, so one is uh, one and a half and one and a half hour i mean linear algebra and yeah. mathematics yes, okay so we start uh, see after um uh, tuesday i'll start at uh, uh, tuesday do we have a class no right no so we'll start at four o'clock or something wednesday four o'clock will be the deadline yes sir. is that okay yes sir. so wednesday we have class uh, your class like three to four uh, um, well, well then it's three o'clock is the deadline <laughs> okay um. okay fine so Five o'clock is the deadline. I'll give one hour after my class also. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Okay, so we will start sometime in the evening on Tuesday. Okay, so Savan will update you on that. We will end sometime in the evening of Wednesday. <clears throat> is that okay? Twenty-four hours time. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Solve. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll stop here. Um, next class we will start uh, Marco chains. Uh, that is tomorrow, right? Next class is tomorrow. No, sir. Friday is changed. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, correct. Friday. So uh, Friday we will uh, do the other things. So we'll start Marco chains rigorously. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So if there are no questions, you can uh, leave. Uh, Savan, please stay back. Huh? just want to talk to you for a minute and then we'll wind up yes okay <clears throat>